Okay, I guess we're live. Let me check quickly on YouTube site before we start. Yes, we're live. Okay, uh, everything looks fine on my side. So I guess we can get started. Let me turn on my camera also. All right. Okay, I think everything is fine now. So before we start, uh, as a reminder, so you can use uh, YouTube chat uh, to ask questions. Uh, I'll be regularly checking the chat if you have any questions so that I can answer them uh during the during the lecture um so with that being said i guess we can get started so again welcome everyone uh welcome to the first lecture of the mobile genomics course that we're offering under project and seminar courses uh so today we're going to be uh covering the basics of this course uh what you should expect from this course and what we expect uh, from the students as well taking this course. So I guess with that, I can get started. So this semester, we offer two PNS genomics courses. Uh, one is PNS mobile genomics course, which is um, this one. Uh, the mobile genomics course mainly uh, aim to basically design hardware uh, and and or software mainly for constrained computational resources, for example, using uh, uh, low power designs so that they can efficiently work on uh, mobile uh, phones. So another PNS genomics course is uh, PNS Accelerating Genomics. And in that course, we mainly uh, focus on co-designing hardware and software to accelerate genome analysis uh, pipeline. And uh, both of these courses are uh, project-based courses, uh, and these courses are taken mainly by bachelor's and uh, master's students. Uh, we also have weekly lectures on genomics, uh, genome analysis. Um, the students are going to be doing hands-on research exploration with mentors throughout the semester once we assign the projects to them. And by uh, doing their projects, they're gonna be improving uh, their research and presentation skills. So with that, let me briefly cover uh, what we're going to include uh, on our uh, weekly lectures. So we're gonna be offering the lectures on YouTube. They are gonna be either uh, uh, live streamed or premiered. And this is basically the schedule of the lectures and how they look basically throughout the semester. So this is a tentative schedule. Uh, but you can uh, go and check the course website to basically uh, see what we have in the lecture and then to see if there are any changes in that course. Um, so we offered a mobile genomics course last semester as well. So you can, again, check the course website from last semester to see the content. Uh, we also uh, release the lectures again on YouTube last semester. So we have a playlist including these lectures. So this is the link to the playlist. Uh, you can also go to that playlist and then see what we've covered last semester if you're curious about them. Uh, we've been offering a mobile genomics course uh, since um, fall 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we really had basically overall good progress uh, in terms of the uh, projects that we offer to the students and, and, and in terms of the progress that the students actually showed throughout the semester. And some of these students actually decided to continue with us after uh, completing successfully completing their PNS uh, genomics courses. Uh, for example, doing a bachelor's thesis, bachelor's thesis or master's thesis uh, or writing a paper, let's say. So in general, basically, if you are really curious about the project or in general genome analysis. And if you want to continue working with us, you can always uh, let us know uh, your interest and we're gonna be happy to uh, discuss uh, the opportunities uh, with you uh, so that we can assign you uh, projects 
or decide what sort of projects that you can work on uh, after after the PNS course. So then let me cover the the, the role of this course uh, that's that that we're offering this semester. Um, so we mainly have two parts uh, in this course, and the first part is the week lectures. Uh, the week lectures are going to cover the basics uh, of genome analysis uh, pipeline, so that you can um, understand basically the uh, main steps in computational uh, analysis of the entire genome analysis pipeline. So they are really important for you to learn the basics as well as the uh, let's say the clever solutions uh, uh, that are basically proposed to solve the critical problems in genome analysis. Uh, the second part, which is the most important part, is the, the hands-on um, projects that you're going to be uh, doing with your mentors. So uh, generally, these projects usually start with uh, a brief understanding of the pr prior works uh, that are done in, in, the, in the area that you're gonna be working on. So probably your mentor is going to be assigning you some papers or some relevant work so that you're going to be um, understanding prior work before you start the project. Um, and you're gonna be basically uh, experimentally evaluate these. Uh, so by learning the prior work, you're gonna be learning the heuristics, the algorithms uh, in the field, and you're gonna be experimentally evaluate the, evaluating the different heuristics and algorithms to observe their effect on the end result. For example, those heuristics may be improving the performance or perhaps like slightly reducing the accuracy, right? You're gonna be learning about these trade-offs. Uh, basically, such an evaluation will give you the chance to carry out your own project because now that you learned about the algorithms and the, the, these different designs, now basically you're gonna be able to implement uh, one or more of these heuristics uh, ideally in a computational constraint environment, for example, in mobile phones, so that you can help the society by enabling on-site analysis of genomic data, where uh, we can really be restrained by the computational resources that we have. For example, we may not have an access to uh, uh, servers, let's say, but you'll still need to do uh, uh, quick, let's say, genome analysis on-site. So those basically designs really aim to help uh, the researchers uh, to perform efficient and accurate genome analysis on site. Uh, so we also have, uh, we also expect students to achieve certain key objectives uh, by the end of the semester. And one objective is basically, we really hope that you are really going to ha uh, have the basic knowledge in genome analysis. Uh, in, in the genome analysis pipeline. Uh, and this is this can be done if you can really follow the weekly lectures that we're offering, right? So that you can learn uh, about the basics of genome analysis. And uh, you're going to be also working closely with your mentor uh, to solve an important problem. And you're going to be learning the prior work doing so. This means that you're going to be hopefully improving your technical skills in genome analysis and, and, and computer architecture. Uh, in your meetings with your mentor, uh, so you're gonna be discussing the solutions that you want to uh, offer or propose to solve an important problem. And you're going to perhaps be asking important questions, et cetera. This means that you're going to be hopefully um, uh, improving your critical thinking and analysis skills throughout the semester. And by learning the prior work, you're going to get familiar also with the key research directions. So what are the important problems uh, in the field? What people are working on? And what are the remaining open problems? Maybe you're going to be able to identify these open problems that we couldn't actually see ourselves. And then you're going to, uh, for example, offer that, okay, like maybe I, I, I want to work on that open problem. And we're gonna see perhaps like maybe in the coming semesters, if you are really interested in, we're gonna see perhaps that maybe we can write a paper about it. And uh, by the end of the semester, since you're going to be presenting your progress and project to your colleagues, you're going to be improving your technical presentation skills because your mentor is going to also be helping you uh, with your presentation. So by achieving all of these uh, uh, objectives, we really expect 
uh, students learn how they can efficiently implement uh, one of the key steps in genome analysis pipeline on an ideally on a portable device by keeping in mind that the analysis should be done quickly and also efficiently in terms of energy without really sacrificing from accuracy too much. So the, keeping these trade-offs in mind, uh, you're gonna basically have a, a broad picture of how uh, a portable genome analysis pipeline should look like and how you can improve that pipeline, right? So uh, besides that research part, besides that project part, uh, there are some uh, prerequisites of the course and some requirements that we expect from you, uh, from, from you so that like you can uh, success, successfully complete this uh, course. And uh, I'll first cover the prerequisites of the course. So we don't really expect you to have a prior knowledge on, on, the, on the genome analysis. Right? So this is not really required. But, and that's why we have weekly lectures. So if you follow these weekly lectures, uh, it's gonna be good enough for you to get to know uh, about the basics of genome analysis so that you can start making sense basically about the project that you're working on. Uh, but we really expect you to have an interest, to show an interest in making things efficient. Uh, and also you should really have an interest in solving problems. Because without this, in my at least opinion, it's really challenging for you to show some steady and important progress throughout the semester, right? If you are really not interested in, in the project that you're working on, or if you are not really interested in solving the problems, it's really challenging for both you and on your mentor uh, to, uh, to keep basically uh, uh, having some progress on, on the project. Uh, we also expect you to have a good knowledge in C or C++ uh, programming languages. Uh, it is important to have a good knowledge, especially because uh, the, the, the mobile genomics projects mostly cover improving the existing works, and these existing works usually are usually implemented in C or C++. So without really having a basic knowledge in them, it's really be challenging for you. It's really going to be challenging for you to uh, modify, for example, these implementations so that you can improve them, improve them right? So you, it's really important if you have a good knowledge uh, in, in these programming languages. And these are basically more or less the requirements that we expect from you for mobile genomics course. Um, prerequisites, sorry. And we also have some requirements and expectations uh, from you throughout this course. Uh, so that, as I said, like you can successfully complete this uh, uh, course. And the first one is uh, you're going to be carrying out uh, an hands-on project, right? So we're going to be assigning your project. This means that you're going to be build, building that project, implementing it, coding it, and designing it, right? And you're going to do it with a close engagement uh, with mentors. Uh, this means that it's really important for you to regularly be, meet with your mentors so that if you're stuck, let's say, if you have some error, if you are, have some issues, so that you can discuss it with your mentor. So that hopefully your mentors can show you the right way uh, or alternative way of solving uh, the problem that you're facing at the moment. So it's really important to keep a, a good communication with your mentors so that you can show a steady progress throughout the semester. We also expect you to participate. For example, you should really be following the lectures uh, to have an understanding of the basics of the genome analysis. Because again, like as I said, otherwise it's really challenging for you. Okay, like you're going to be working on a project, but if you really have no idea what's going on overall in a high level, it's really hard to understand basically why you're doing these specific parts. And at least again, like in my opinion, it's really easier. It gets easier to make some progress or to have some motivation on a project if you understand what's going on. And it's really important for you to follow the lecture so that you can understand uh, on a high level what's going on. Um, 
Another thing is that when you meet with your mentors, it's important to ask questions, right? Ask questions, uh, for example, about the next steps, about the things that you're curious about, and also to have some uh, to, to contribute to the meetings with your thoughts and your ideas so that you also contribute to the project with your ideas and thoughts, not just by implementing uh, things or by doing uh, basic hands-on stuff. It's also important to have some intellectual basic conversation with your mentors as part of the participation. And also your mentors are going to be assigning you, some of your mentors are going to be assigning you some papers so that you can learn more about the field, the project that you're working on, uh, so that you can learn more about the prior work uh, on the field. So by the end of the semester, you're going to be presenting your project and progress uh, to your colleagues. Uh, uh, so we expect you to deliver presentation. And also if you've uh, done a project on, on uh, uh, that requires some coding, then we will ask you to also prepare a good GitHub repository so that you can include your code and also the other materials in that GitHub repository so that you can deliver to us. Uh, because we later check that code and what you've done so far in the, in the course. And last, uh, this is not a requirement or an expectation, but perhaps in my opinion is a plus. Uh, if you uh, have really found, let's say an important problem throughout the semester that you're really excited about, that you want to further work on, or if you've really shown uh, good results and good progress on your existing project, uh, we may think that that project itself uh, perhaps can be published. Or basically, if you are interested in working more on that project, we can tell you that there's a chance that this work can be published with a further progress. So we're gonna basically be telling you that. And if you're interested, of course, we'll help, you, help the projects and help you uh, to get uh, these works published uh, in good conference venues or in, in uh, journals. Uh, with that, let me cover the, your responsibilities uh, uh, from, from this course. Uh, so you should be attending the uh, uh, lectures, uh, weekly lectures. So you can find the schedule on the course website. We're going to be releasing the YouTube links as well on the course website. Uh, and we strongly suggest you to follow these lectures, as I said. We also expect you to regularly work on your projects weekly. And on average, like based on the ECTS credits, like perhaps like six hours or so is, is somewhat what we expect. But like we, we also know that it's not always possible to work exactly six hours, like because like you have other duties, for example, an exam or I know maybe an important presentation on that big from for other course. Uh, so that's why like you may be working less or perhaps more than six hours, depending on the workload that you have on that certain week. But we really expect you to have some regular progress, let's say, even if it is a one hour or two hour of working, it's important to let you know your mentor that you, what you worked on and, and, and your progress uh, so that both you and your mentor can plan the upcoming weeks uh, better uh, so that you can complete your project before the end of the semester. Uh, that's why it is also very important to regularly meet with your mentors to plan ahead uh, your next tasks. Uh, and also we expect you to regularly follow the course website so that you can check the schedule, the, the, the lectures. Uh, we expect you to check the Moodle page, uh, Ring Central, uh, and your emails so that you can follow the important announcements uh, from me, like as in, in, in terms of the general structure of the course, or basically, and, and messages from your mentor, right? Uh, so that's why it's important to communicate regularly. And uh, we really expect you to respond to your mentors timely. So we already have some basic, uh, uh, we already have some assignments. Uh, I guess the first assignment that, uh, which you already know the first assignment, uh, which is about uh, the basic information about yourself. Uh, there's a Google Forms. I think you already have the link. If you don't, you can just let me know. Uh, so we expect you to provide the basic information about yourself and your skills, uh, like programming skills or like uh, other type of skills. 
so that we can assign you assign the projects to you better based on your skills and interests, right? So if you haven't done yet, uh, please complete the Google Forms uh, before next week, before our next lecture. So that, again, we can assign the projects better to you. So there's another assignment, which is uh, uh, this paper. This should be already linked from the course website. Uh, uh, this is basically a paper that covers almost the entire steps in the genome analysis pipeline, starting from uh, sequencing, even before sequencing the sample preparation, library preparation, up until the variant calling part where we basically find out the differences uh, that we observe uh, in an individual compared to, let's say, a certain population, so that we can identify uh, diseases, let's say, that a certain individual may have. So it's really important if you that it's really important that you read this paper because. After reading this paper, you're going to have a broad understanding of what's going on in the genome analysis pipeline. Uh, and having this high level picture will help you uh, understand each of the steps better in the upcoming uh, weeks. Uh, so with that, I'll cover the project assignments, but I'll quickly check uh, whether there are any questions on YouTube. There are several, uh, Eyes, I can see. So I'm responding again. Hi, back to them. But I guess there are no questions. Okay. All right. Then uh, continue. Let's continue. Uh, okay. Let's cover the project assignments. Uh, there are several projects that the, that the mentors are going to be offering you, and. The mentors are going to explain these projects, the details of these projects uh, in our in-person in meeting today uh, at 2.15 uh, p.m. Uh, you should already have the details about the location uh, of that meeting uh, since it's an in-person meeting. If you cannot attend in person, uh, you can always join uh, on Zoom, for example, if you are feeling sick or if you cannot make it. But I guess it's useful to do it in person uh so that you can also uh perhaps like i don't know ask quick questions to mentors or even after the meeting right and so to learn more about the projects we really expect you to uh, attend uh or uh watch the attend the meeting or uh, watch the recording um of this meeting so we're going to release the recording uh later on um if you couldn't make it to the meeting at all so it's really important to basically learn the details about this project, projects because so that you can make an informed decision uh, about your project decisions, right? The project preferences. Uh, so that's why basically I'm highlighting this a lot. We either expect you to attend this meeting or watch the recording as soon as possible uh, once we release it um, so that you can learn the de details about this project. Um, we also expect you to complete the assignments one and two um uh again before you make your preferences about the projects uh or before we assign the projects to you because we really need, need to know about your skills as well as well as your interests so that we can make the best the best decision about the project assignments uh after all these uh, you're going to be selecting the type uh, top 5 projects you want to work on uh given that you already you are already informed about the projects. And although this is still tentative, we're going to uh, create a, a poll or post on Moodle uh, starting from tomorrow so that you can uh, submit your preferences about the projects. And the deadline is going to be next um, uh, uh, Wednesday, I guess, March 8. Uh, this is still tentative, but like probably this should be the... Um, correct dates. So you should assume that these are the correct uh, deadlines and starting dates. And after your preferences, we're going to match your interests, skills, and background with the suitable project. And we're going to basically uh, announce the project that we assigned to you so that you can, uh, and then later on, we're going to put you in touch with your mentor so that you can start planning the upcoming weeks uh, with your mentor about the project. Um, by the way, in the in-person meeting that we're having today, of course, you can ask questions uh, about the uh, project and the course 
uh, as well. Um, so mentors are going to be offering the projects. So naturally it's important to get to know them. So I'll uh, briefly cover who we are, uh, who are the mentors in this course. Uh, I'll start uh, with myself. I am John, um, John Fortuna. I'm a PhD student in the Safari Research Group. So my research interests broadly span uh, bioinformatics, real-time genome analysis, genome editing, and hardware acceleration of genome analysis. Uh, you can get to know us, our group, and our research uh, at our uh, group website, which is here. You can contact me also using my Gmail address or my ETH address that you already know. Uh, this is also my personal academic website to learn uh, more about uh, about my research. And this is my Twitter account again uh, to uh, again follow me and the academic contact that I'm posting on Twitter. Uh, we also have uh, senior researchers and lecturers as mentors in this course. Uh, for example, Mohammed Alser is a senior lecturer and uh, a researcher and lecturer. Um, we also have Juan and how you again, uh, they are all senior uh, researchers and lecturers. So these are all these are these can be your mentors, uh, basically, if you're assigned to those uh, corresponding projects that they are offering. Uh, we also have uh, other PhD students other than me. Uh, for example, we have Nika and we have Joel. Uh, they can be also your mentors. Hopefully you're going to be meeting them in our in-person meeting today. Uh, we also have some master's students who, again, can be your mentors uh, in the semester. Uh, for example, we have Arvid, uh, Julian, and Max uh, as your potential mentors, or Banu, again, as a potential mentor of yours, uh, who is also a master's student again. Uh, we have Yunju, who is a mobility student uh, in our group, and we have Felipe, who is a, a visiting a researcher in our group as well. So all of these people are uh, working on, on some topics uh, in bioinformatics and hardware acceleration of genome analysis. And they're going to be offering you the projects uh, today based on their, of course, research interests and ex expertise. Uh, so it's, it's really important to also get to know them uh, in, in the meeting today. So uh, with that, uh, let me then uh, uh, state the general goal and the, 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 the basically the general idea uh, what we are trying to achieve by offering these projects or overall like in our group. So we really want to basically achieve uh, intelligent genome analysis. And the natural question of course is like, what is intelligent genome analysis, right? Uh, we're going to be offering the projects uh, so that uh, we can achieve intelligent genome analysis in five main directions that we're seeing. Uh, and these five directions should be accomplished all together so that we can uh, achieve an intelligent genome analysis. And uh, one direction uh, to this is, is, is basically achieving a fast genome analysis. So we really want to answer the questions to genome analysis, right, uh, as, as soon as possible because uh, the answer, uh, the answers to these genome analysis questions can be life critical uh, questions and answers, right? So it's really important to get these answers uh, as fast as possible. So this is one of the directions that we're aiming. We're trying to even perhaps like achieve real time analysis of genome analysis. Um, so another direction is since our group is also an expert on. Uh, uh, wide variety of, of the hardware architectures, for example, processing in memory, FPGAs or GPUs, uh, like SSDs and, and, and even in DRAM, uh, we really basically uh, aim to figure out the right hardware design so that we can basically perform genome analysis in an efficient way in terms of, for example, energy and also with uh, a, a low latency. Uh, keeping basically the hardware design in mind. So we're basically designing hardware and software together. So this is another direction that we're following in our group. So we already know, we also know that the DNA is a valuable asset. It can show critical and sensitive stuff about, about, about yourself, right? So we know that it should be kept 
secret and private. So that's another direction that we're following in our group. Uh, so it's also important to perform, to be able to perform population scale genome analysis. So it's, we're not always basically uh, allocating all the computational resources for to analyze a single uh, individual, let's say. But what we're essentially doing is like we can perhaps uh, try to uh, analyze uh, uh, thousands of basically individuals at once. Uh, and that's why basically it's important to be able to uh, perform population scale genome analysis or basically be, um, build data structures that can represent the, the population itself so that uh, you're making your analysis compared to an entire population other than a single uh, individual. But this is another direction, and here it's important to have some scalability in the designs so that we can perform uh, population scale genome analysis. So another part, which is, uh, again, like probably one of the most important uh, directions is to avoid erroneous analysis so that we can achieve accurate genome analysis, right? Because if you think basically, if you achieve, let's say, really, really fast genome analysis, but if your result is wrong, it's, it's useless, right? So it's really then important to have bought uh, a, a good accuracy and, and a fast genome analysis so that we can really make an, a, a good decision uh, about the genome analysis uh, uh, itself, right? And, and quick decision. So that's why all of these directions are very important to achieve. And your project is essentially going to cover either one of these or multiple of these directions uh, so that like, we can uh, achieve intelligent genome analysis. Uh, so in the next meetings and the week, the lectures, uh, we're essentially going to be covering the basics of genome analysis, as I said, and these basics are really start from uh, DNA sequencing. Like it starts from how we prepare the DNA or RNA before even we start sequencing that. And then how we basically use the DNA sequencing machines to generate the human readable data from, from, from DNA so that we can as, uh, perform genome analysis, right? And we're gonna be basically showing you uh, how you can access the uh, uh, public genomic data to perform analysis on them. There are some, uh, public uh, um, uh, databases such as NCBI, for example, uh, or there are simulators that can simulate the uh, genomic data uh, really accurately. And we're going to be basically covering other uh, steps in genome analysis, for example, based calling how you translate the data that is generated by, from DNA sequencer to ATGCs, let's say in a, in, a, in, uh, in terms of the uh, nucleotide characters, uh, how you perform quality control on the data, how we basically identify the similarities between your genome and the population itself in a step called read mapping and how we identify the mutations in, in a step using a step varying calling. So we're going to be covering uh, almost all of these steps uh, in the next uh, lectures. So with that, let me again show you the topics that we're going to be covering uh, this semester. So this is a tentative schedule. Again, uh, you can find it on the course website. So our early uh, weeks, in our early weeks, we're going to be covering the, uh, the, the basics of genome analysis. For example, what is sequencing? What is read mapping? And what is genome assembly, et cetera? And in the upcoming, in the, in the later weeks, we're going to be covering the solutions that, uh, that address uh, one or more of these steps that we have in genome analysis pipeline uh, by either using a, a, a special hardware, let's say, and designing the software accordingly, or basically purely uh, using, a, 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 a purely proposing a new software design, right? So these are basically the, um, these are mainly the works that, that are uh, published from our group, and we're going to be covering them uh, in the next uh, week, so you can see them here. And in the last week, we're going to be covering how we can perform a role uh, nanopore signal analysis in real time uh, as the data is being generated from nanopore. And we're going to be covering two related works from our group. So if you're interested in reading more, learning more about these uh, topics, uh, you can also read this paper, which covers uh, almost all the uh, 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 basic developments from 1980s up to today, up to today about basically the um, efforts 
into making accurate and fast genome analysis. And it usually starts with identifying the similarities uh, between sequences that the DNA sequencing machines are generating so that we can map them either to a reference genome, which is a representative of a certain species, for example, a human reference genome, or we can construct uh, your genome itself by looking at the sequences. Uh, and there are basic data structures uh, built to achieve them accurately and, and uh, efficiently. And if you read this paper, you're going to see all these efforts uh, and the history of these efforts, and it's really a comprehensive paper uh, to read. We also have some basically papers that cover how we can use near memory computing to achieve, to perform some steps in genome analysis, for example, uh, uh, pre-alignment filtering as, as described in this paper, or again, in this paper. Uh, we also have Genasm that proposes how we can perform approximate string matching, which is uh, really an important step in genome analysis uh, using an, uh, a near memory uh, acceleration uh, in order to improve the performance and the energy efficiency or like throughput of genome analysis pipeline. Um, you can also uh, read this paper, JetStor, which essentially uses uh, in storage processing sy system. Like we propose how we can process the data without really moving it to main memory. Uh, if we can basically perform a, a, a quick processing within the uh, storage system itself. And this basically significantly reduces the data movement overhead from disk to main memory, which uh, subsequently reduces, uh, improves the performance and uh, reduces the energy overall energy usage. Um, we also have JamPip, uh, which uses uh, uh, pure in-memory acceleration uh, to accelerate genome analysis by uh, accelerating two important steps in, in, in the genome analysis pipeline. This was presented very recently in micro last year. And we also say gram, uh, which is the first uh, uh, graph-based uh, genome analysis acceleration work. And this was also presented last year in ISCA. Uh, this is another work that, that shows how we can use in-memory computing to filter out really the useless sequences uh, from the genome analysis pipeline quickly. This is another work that uses real in-memory hardware uh, to perform sequence alignment. So this, it is important that it, it uses a real hardware uh, and you can see basically how a real in-memory computing can be used to accelerate genome analysis in this paper. And we have Demeter, uh, which uses hyperdimensional computing to achieve uh, microbiome uh, profiling uh, in memory again. Uh, we also have Sneaky Snake, uh, which can use CPUs, GPUs, or APGA to filter out again uh, the sequences that are not really that are not really going to be use, useful uh, down the line down in, in the downstream analysis of genome uh, analysis. And uh, Gatekeeper is a prior work, let's say, of Sneaky Snake. Uh, you can also read this paper. Uh, we also have almost pure software-based works. For example, Blend, uh, which can find uh, not only exact matches of sequences, but also some approximate matches of sequences with uh, almost instantly by uh, uh, generating some basically hash values that can uh, be assigned to uh, highly similar sequences. Um, and there's, uh, so we have Airlift, which can quickly remap the reads that were mapped to a reference genome to another reference genome, if the reference genome is close enough to, to the previously mapped uh, reference genome. And fast remap is uh, essentially a light weight, let's say, uh, um, version of Airlift, which was published in Bioinformatics uh, last year. And we also have raw hash, which can perform real-time genome analysis uh, as the data being is, is generated from nanopore sequencers. And if you basically watch or learn more about how we can accelerate genome analysis, you can uh, watch this talk uh, or this lecture given by uh, Mohamed Alser. So here's the link, YouTube link. So you can access these slides on the course website and, and you can also access these links again uh, by accessing the slides. Or you can uh, again watch this uh, talk um, given at UC Berkeley uh, 
last year, again, on accelerating gene analysis. Uh, or we have basically several more talks uh, on, on, the, on the similar line, again, exciting gene analysis by Mohamed al -Sar, um, or we have this fast gene analysis uh, given by Professor Anur Mutlu. And we also have some uh, lectures uh, and, and the courses that we offered previously, you can find all these lectures uh, by visiting Professor Anur Mutlu's uh, YouTube channel. So there are quite a lot of uh, content there. So I strongly suggest you uh, um, following the content there if you if you're excited about learning more more about computer architecture and genome analysis. So with that, I really hope that uh, it was clear for you at least to understand the requirements and what we expect from you and what I expected from you. So I'm going to quickly again check uh, the YouTube chat to see if there are any questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can end the meeting. So let me see. Okay, I guess there are no questions. So if you have any questions, again, you can ask them to me um, or to your mentors in our meeting today. But with that, I guess uh, we can end the meeting.